With the windrow composting, the biggest issue that they went over is having a, a base of about 18 to 24 inches deep and not putting more than three or four layers in, not going above seven foot. Keep birds about 12 inches from all the edges and a maximum of two birds deep in each layer. That's really important. If you try to get three or four birds deep, it's not going to work. It's going to throw the whole thing off. And the worst thing that I've ever smelled is the compost pile that went back. So you'll have a lot of complaints from neighbors if, you, if, you make, if it goes wrong. Um, the biggest things that I, I see is, we alluded to this, and Dr. Mason is going to kind of back us up a little bit with this, but if you get into a situation where you need to do outside wind rowing, composting, or in-house um, composting, or, or having to use your litter shed to um, compost excess birds and stuff, you're going to have to get a permit from NCDA's vet office. So what will help speed that permitting process along is in your plan, if the next time you have someone from NRCS come out and inspect your litter shed or whatever, have them cite a spot on your farm that you could put in an outside wind road. If you have it cited already and stuff, that's one less step they have to do in case of emergency situations. We want you guys to think, you don't want to be scrambling around after something happens. If you can cite where your burial pit's going to be, and heaven forbid if you have to do outside wind rowing and stuff, if you know on the farm where it's a safe place to do it, as it is cited somewhere in a letter from NRCS or on a map of your farm, you know, just cite it on, on a map and have you know, them initial it. What I'm saying is when Dr. Mason or, or her contemporaries come to your farm to look at it, if it's already cited and stuff, that's one less step they have to do. Um, the other thing, Dan, if, if you lose uh, a loud bird uh, this afternoon at uh, 6 o'clock, there's no way. How are you going to get a permit? You know, the birds are going to be taking place. Well, the no. big, what Dr. Mason was saying to, to us yesterday is if you call her office and you've already have, have a side of the thing from NRCS, they'll do a verbal thing over the phone with you. Okay. okay. It's a 24 hour number, so. Yeah. Now, the outside considerations, again, um, one of the things, problems doing it outside is dogs, uh, raccoons coming in and digging out dead birds. One of the things that we've got the technology now is putting in step in posts around the, the windrows and putting in a temporary fence with string to keep the dogs and raccoons away. That's one way to do it. Um, rodent control, you probably need to go ahead and uh, use some bait and poison traps and stuff for rodents. So those are some considerations and stuff. I wouldn't. This wouldn't keep me from doing it if I had to, but I'm just saying that that's um, one way to control the dogs and raccoons. The other thing is, too, is if you have a litter storage shed already, that would probably be your safest place to do outside composting. But if you don't have a uh, litter storage shed, you know, this might be an option that, that you have to do someday. And again, if you have an RCS while they're on your farm, site a place that would be safe to do it, it's a, it's a good option to think about. Um, In-house considerations. I think the only time that you really use the in-house composting is if you ran into a problem um, with AI or uh, foreign animal disease, where you basically you're gonna, your farm's going to be under quarantine for at least two to three months anyway. You're not going to be able to put birds right back. So what I'm saying is in those um, situations, you need to talk to your companies. But I think in, in some ways and stuff, if you had AI and stuff, that might be the safest way to do it. If the, if the um, house is tall enough to let a backhoe get in, in your houses and actually compost them in the house. And again, that would be under the direction of the state vet's office, and um, Dr. Mason's going to kind of go over that later. 